Well, number one, they want a, an accountability system that reflects uh, what they're doing well and where they need to improve. Uh, I am hearing across the state that they want measures that go beyond the proficiency of students mm -hmm. on end of grade and end of course tests. And I'm also hearing a lot of conversation about how we need to address the entire child rather than having an accountability system segmented into just core courses versus elective courses or versus uh, other types of measures that could be a good indicator of how well our students are learning. Mm -hmm. When the governor, uh, you know, gave us a call to action, um, he's made education his number one priority, and um, he allowed us uh, to aggressively move forward and, you know, to, to create policy that we believe is in the best interest of children, of students, um, teachers, and um, and the communities we serve. So as, you know, the, the opportunity um, that SSA, ESSA provides to the department is to relook at and rethink about uh, federal policy and, re and rethink federal mandates. And in PA, it's going to give us an opportunity to be much more holistically focused on the needs of students um, and the needs of their families. You know, we believe, especially here in the Commonwealth, that we've been very uh, high stakes test centric. Um, it's been, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of looking at uh, one single measure, there are cases where 60 to 90% of our evaluation of schools uh, and students are aligned to standardized uh -huh. tests. Okay. So um, this will present an opportunity for us to think more holistically about education. Um, and, you know, we're excited about that opportunity. Are there barriers to as you kind of assess where the system is right now, are there barriers to getting that done in North Carolina? Well, one of the biggest challenges we have in North Carolina mm -hmm. is to fulfill the goal that is in ESSA to have an aligned state and federal accountability system. Mm -hmm. North Carolina is in its fourth year of an A through F system, mm -hmm. and that system is based on proficiency of students in grades three through eight and also at the high school level. It is very prescriptive. And so with uh, ESSA, mm -hmm. we know that we have to add indicators, non-academic indicators. Mm -hmm. So by virtue of the federal law, we are out of alignment. So one of our challenges is to develop through all of our work with people in North Carolina, a very comprehensive quality accountability system and then as we develop that system to have input from our legislators so that when we get through the first leg of our journey we can go to the General Assembly and say we've got massive input and we'd like to work with you in changing the A through F system to that which the public expects our schools to do mm -hmm. and to be measured by X. So <clears throat> if I recall correctly in North Carolina, the largest proportion of your accountability system, the metrics that are being used right now, is your kind of student proficiency numbers. Right. And then there's a, a pretty small percentage that relates to growth or something of that nature. Is that not correct? That's correct. Our system has 80% proficiency on tests in grades three through eight, mm -hmm. and then 20% growth. I'm talking about what I'm hearing from the public. Right. Uh, one of the uh, pieces of advice we've received is make growth more important mm -hmm. than proficiency. Yeah, I can share with you, you know, for example, when you just look at, you know, educational science and educational um, proven practice, best practice, so to speak, mm -hmm. we know that indicators such as reading level attainment, math level attainment, we know indicators of uh, attendance, we know looking at English language proficiency for English language learners and meeting the needs of our special needs students, mm -hmm. having college and career readiness standards um, in place. So these are all factors that we know, you know, just in being educators mm -hmm. are, are indicators of success um, while at the same time, indicators that will allow us to, to use early warning um, opportunities to ensure that our kids like are being that. as successful as they can and we're not losing students in the mm -hmm. process. Well, I view 
ESSA as a way of us to move to a, a better place in public education. For example, in reality, I do believe that end of grade and end of course test given at the very end of the year is a 20th century artifact. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, we don't have a better system yet, but we need to work on having a better system where we get to the place where assessments are integrated mm -hmm. into activities so students and teachers don't know the difference or they don't, they don't make a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. And so ESSA gives us an opportunity to start and continue that journey to get to a better place where technology can be one of our best friends in determining how well our schools are doing. Uh, it is also a challenge to get people to wipe the slate clean, to say, here's where we are and we can start over in many areas. So that takes a lot of creativity to get people to think in creative ways. And uh, in North Carolina, I don't, we have not come to the place where we have reached that pinnacle of creativity, but I feel comfortable as we continue to work with uh, people in North Carolina, especially our educators, that we can come, uh, we can devise some really creative but meaningful and valid and reliable ways of determining how well our schools are serving our students.